farmer started digging around it, brushing away the mud, pulled it out, and there was this giant stone head gazing back at him. Many people are crazy about ancient mysteries, but the story of the Lovelock Cave Giants has always been plagued by rumors of a cover-up. Skeletons over eight feet tall were supposedly found, then vanished. But now, bone fragments that survived have finally been tested and the genetic results are out. What they reveal is unbelievable. They are unique in the regard that for their time, there was no other statuary that was in human form and size and that level of detail and sophistication. We're not just talking about height, we're talking about genetic markers for bone density that are almost alien compared to ours. This isn't a hoax, this is hard science, and it proves that something extraordinary was happening in the Nevada desert thousands of years ago. The Land of Giants. For over a century, this story was dismissed by historians as folklore. It was a fascinating piece of cultural mythology, but nothing more. But not all things are what they seem. In the year 1911, a pair of miners digging for bat guano to sell as fertilizer stumbled upon that very same cave near Lovelock, Nevada. As they dug through layers of bird droppings that were hundreds of years old, their shovels hit something hard. It wasn't rock, it was bone, and then more bones. What they uncovered would ignite a mystery that continues to this day. The miners unearthed over 10,000 artifacts from intricately woven duck decoys to baskets and tools. But it was the human remains that were, to put it mildly, astonishing. They found two mummified bodies. One was a man who, even in his shrunken mummified state, measured an incredible six feet, six inches tall. And clinging to his skull were tufts of unmistakable red hair. Remember, the average Paiute man from that era stood around five feet, six inches. So a man a full foot taller was a giant in comparison. The discoveries got even stranger. A sandal was found that measured 15 inches long, its sole worn down from what must have been impossible journeys. A large boulder was discovered with a handprint embedded in it that spanned 18 inches, nearly twice the size of a modern man's hand. The news spread like wildfire. A dig funded by the University of California in 1931 reportedly found two more skeletons. Locals who were there swore one was eight and a half feet tall and the other a staggering 10 feet. What many overlooked is that while the official university reports were more conservative, calling them unusually large, the local newspapers were buzzing with tales of giants. Was this just small town hype or was something being covered up? Skeptics say that post-mortem conditions can turn dark hair red over time, but the sheer number of red-haired finds in this one spot was a statistical anomaly. The most shocking fact is this wasn't an isolated incident. All across America, stories of giant skeletons were popping up. In the 1800s, a mound in Ohio was opened to reveal an eight-foot skeleton with a strange bull double row of teeth, a detail that sounds like a fantasy, but oddly mirrors the unique dental features of some ancient hominins. West Virginia's Cressup Mound, excavated in the 1950s, contained a verified seven-foot, two-inch skeleton. The curator who studied it noted that all long bones were heavy, far more robust than a typical human's. It seemed that wherever people looked, the echoes of giants were waiting to be found. But back in Lovelock, the most promising evidence was about to undergo a revolutionary new test, one that would finally separate fact from folklore. The bones were about to give up their genetic secrets. Blueprint of a Lost Race for decades, the bones from Lovelock Cave sat in museum archives, their true story locked away. Measuring bones with a tape measure could only tell you so much. It couldn't answer the real questions. Who were these people? Were they just a tall tribe or were they something else entirely? But with the dawn of the 21st century, a new technology emerged that could read the very blueprint of life, ancient DNA analysis or a DNA. Getting a clean genetic sample from bones that are thousands of years old is incredibly difficult. You see, DNA is fragile. It shatters over time, gets contaminated by bacteria, and can be completely destroyed by heat and moisture. But the cool, dry conditions of Lovelock Cave were the perfect natural preservative. In 2024, a team of geneticists took on the challenge. 
Using cutting edge techniques, they drilled into the densest part of the inner ear bone, a treasure chest of preserved DNA from three of the Lovelock individuals. What they found was nothing short of a genetic bombshell. The first thing they looked at was the mitochondrial DNA, which is passed down from the mother. The results showed haplogroups A2 and D1, both of which are common founding lineages in Native American populations. So, on their mother's side, these individuals were related to the indigenous people of the Americas. Case closed, right? They were just tall Native Americans, not so fast. The thing nobody tells you is that this was just the first piece of a much larger and much stranger puzzle. The team then analyzed the nuclear DNA, the part that holds the secrets to an individual's physical traits. They ran a polygenic risk score for height. This is a complex analysis that looks at over 12,000 different genetic markers known to influence a person's stature. The results were off the charts. The scores predicted that these individuals would have stood between 1.8 and 2.1 meters tall, that's between 5 feet 11 and 6 feet 10 inches. This placed them in the 95th percentile for ancient people. They were, genetically speaking, programmed to be giants. The analysis even pointed to the specific genes responsible, an overexpression of genes that regulate growth factors like IGF-1, which is like a genetic fertilizer for the human body. These genetic variants are extremely rare in modern people, but were more common in ancient European hunter-gatherers from 30,000 years ago. This was a wow factor moment for the team. They had found the genetic recipe for the giants of legend, but the most unbelievable discovery was yet to come and it had nothing to do with their height. It was what they found deep inside the bones themselves. Using high resolution micro CT scans, the scientists examined the internal structure of the bones. What they saw made them question everything. Modern humans have a relatively light, spongy internal bone structure. But the Lovelock bones were different. Their internal trabecular bone was 30% denser than that of a modern human. To put it mildly, their bones were built like a brick house. This super dense phenotype isn't something you see in Homo sapiens. You have to go much, much further back in the human family tree to find anything like it. In fact, the closest match they could find was to our ancient extinct cousins, the Neanderthals. This discovery changed the game completely. It meant the Lovelock Giants weren't just tall, they were built differently on a fundamental level. Their strength and resilience would have been almost superhuman compared to other people of their time. The question was no longer how tall were they, but what were they? Their unique combination of Native American ancestry, ancient height genes, and archaic bone density pointed to a mind-bending possibility. It suggested they were a hybrid, a mix of modern human and something else something that was supposed to have vanished from the earth tens of thousands of years ago. The DNA was pointing to a ghost in our family tree, an ancient crossroad. The discovery of Neanderthal-like bone density in the Lovelock skeletons opened up a Pandora's box of possibilities. Many people are crazy about the idea that we weren't alone on this planet, that other types of humans existed alongside our ancestors. And they're right. We know we shared the world with species like the Neanderthals in Europe and Asia, but the story gets even weirder with the discovery of the Denisovans. The Denisovans are a true ghost lineage. We know they existed almost entirely from a few tiny fragments of bone, a pinky finger and some teeth, found in a cave in Siberia. Yet their DNA tells us they were a distinct group of archaic humans who interbred with our ancestors. You can see this everywhere today. About 5% of the DNA of modern people from Oceania comes from Denisovans. So could the Lovelock Giants be related to these mysterious Denisovans? The idea sounds like science fiction. The Denisovans were thought to have lived exclusively in Asia. But what if some of them crossed the Beringia land bridge into the Americas thousands of years before the ancestors of modern Native Americans? This would make them the true first Americans. The genetic data from Lovelock adds fuel to this fire. When scientists tried to model the ancestry of the Lovelock individuals, they found that about 5 to 8% of their genome was a ghost ancestry. It was a chunk of DNA that didn't match any known modern or ancient human group. It was a missing piece, and its closest statistical match was to the Denisovan genome. This is a wow factor of epic proportions. 
It suggests that the Siteka of Paiute legend might have been a surviving population of human Denisovan hybrids. This would explain everything. Their towering height. Check the Harbin cranium, a massive skull found in China that is believed to be Denisovan, suggests a person well over six feet tall with a brain case 30% larger than ours. Their incredible robustness and bone density. Czech Denisovan and Neanderthal bones were built to withstand the brutal physical stresses of an Ice Age world. What many overlooked for years was the possibility that these archaic humans didn't just disappear. They melted into our own gene pool, and in isolated pockets like Lovelock, their traits remained strong for thousands of years. The most shocking fact is that this evidence isn't just in Nevada. That massive Harbin skull from China, nicknamed Dragon Man, is a potential model for what a full-grown Denisovan looked like. And in a cave in Tibet, scientists found a Denisovan jawbone that confirmed these people could adapt to high-altitude, low-oxygen environments, an adaptation powered by a specific Denisovan gene, EPAS1, that modern Tibetans still carry today. So, the picture that emerges is one of a lost race of incredibly tough, large-bodied, archaic humans who once spanned all of Asia. Is it really so crazy to think they took that final step into the Americas? If they did, they would have been met by the incoming waves of Homo sapiens. A conflict would have been inevitable. It sounds an awful lot like the Paiute legend of a long war against a different, more powerful tribe, doesn't it? The genes don't lie. But the story they tell is so revolutionary, so paradigm-shifting, that it runs up against a wall of academic dogma and, some say, a deliberate effort to keep the truth hidden. The puzzle pieces were there, but not everyone wanted them put together. Fact, fiction, and the forgotten. So, if there's all this evidence, the legends, the oversized bones, the shocking DNA results, why isn't this front-page news? Why aren't history books being rewritten? The thing nobody tells you is that this field of research is riddled with controversy, hoaxes, and a powerful narrative that is very resistant to change. For years, there has been a persistent conspiracy theory that the Smithsonian Institution has been actively covering up the discovery of giants in America. The story goes that in the early 1900s, they found thousands of giant skeletons, and to protect the established theory of human evolution and migration, they dumped them all in the Atlantic Ocean. This story, which first appeared on a satirical news website in 2014, is a complete hoax, debunked by fact checkers everywhere. There is zero evidence it ever happened, and you can see this everywhere in the history of this mystery. Hype and exaggeration have been constant companions. Carnival promoters in the early 20th century would often mix and match bones, putting a mastodon femur next to a human skull to create a giant skeleton for paying tourists. Local newspapers, eager for a sensational story, would print unverified claims from eyewitnesses who swore they saw a 10-foot-tall skeleton. This blend of folklore, genuine anomaly, and outright fabrication has made it very easy for mainstream science to dismiss the entire topic as pseudoscience. But here's the crucial detail that gets lost in all that noise. Just because some of it is fake doesn't mean all of it is. The DNA evidence from Lovelock Cave isn't a hoax. The polygenic scores for height are real. The micro CT scans showing Neanderthal level bone density are real. The unmodeled ghost ancestry is a real statistical finding. These are the facts that remain after you strip away all the tall tales and conspiracy theories. So what are we really looking at? Are we missing a key detail? The picture becomes clearer when you stop thinking in terms of a separate species of 10-foot-tall monsters. Instead, think about it like this. A small, isolated group of early Americans who carried a higher-than-normal percentage of archaic DNA, likely from a Denisovan-like ancestor. Over generations of isolation, these archaic traits, height and robustness, became more pronounced. They weren't a different species, they were just a unique and now extinct branch of our own family tree. The people watching this are probably wondering, could this be true? The thing is, human history isn't a clean, straight line. It's a messy, tangled bush of interbreeding and extinction. We know our ancestors mixed with Neanderthals and Denisovans. So what do you think? Were the giants a lost human subspecies or just a tall tale? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more hidden history.